Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, and a very, very special episode. An episode that when I first started this channel, I never thought I would ever make, because today we have broken the 10,000 subscriber mark. That's right, over 10,000 people have hit that subscriber button, and that is such an amazing achievement, I can't believe it. I really am lost for words. I started this channel years ago now, and I used to post thank you videos every time I reached 100 new subscribers. And it really felt like I would never have a big audience. But of course, I'm just the mug behind the camera. I only have this channel now because of all of you. All of you who are watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting in the videos. And I really cannot thank you enough for all of that support. It means so much to me. This channel has become really important to me and I want to keep going with it. I want to keep making it bigger and better and it's only because of you that I can do that. So really, this is just a big, heartfelt, genuine thank you to all of you. And yes, in the grand scheme of big successful YouTube channels, 10,000 is still relatively small, but it's a massive deal for me and such a massive achievement for me means I had to celebrate in a special way. I have said before that when I reach milestones, I like to reward myself in some way. And this time I have really rewarded myself. I have hit eBay and I have purchased something that I've wanted for a really long time, something that is really expensive. And I'm going to share it with you in today's video as a special reward because I have purchased Space Crusade Elder Attack. And this is one of my board gaming grails. Space Crusade itself was produced in the UK and it was available in some other territories and in places like Germany it was released as StarQuest but there are many territories where it never got a release so it never made it to North America. As a result the distribution was much smaller and it's sort of HeroQuest's lesser known cousin. And because it was a generally smaller release, it only had two expansions. The first was Mission Dreadnought which I already have and I've already covered on the channel and then the second was Elder Attack. And these really are pretty difficult to find. They pop up on eBay occasionally in the UK, but they are always pretty expensive, especially if they are still in the box like this one was. And I actually paid 180 pounds for this. And that may sound like a lot, and it is a lot, but this was something I really, really wanted to add to my collection, something I really wanted to feature on the channel. And there is no better time than this. So in today's video, I am going to unbox Space Crusade Elder Attack. We're going to look through all of the components. And finally, I'm going to show you how I am storing this expansion to keep it safe. First things first, as with Mission Dreadnought, as with Hero Quest expansions, Elder Attack came in a flimsy tuck box. And that means many of the copies you see on the secondary market now do not have a box. It would have been quite common for people to take out the miniatures, assemble them, chuck the cards and the miniatures in their core game box and dispose of the flimsy expansion tuck box. So if you do find a copy that is still boxed, then you are going to be paying a premium. But even without the box, this expansion is not cheap. So just be prepared to dig deep if you do want a copy of this for yourself. With that out of the way, let's take a look inside. First of all, you have the new rules book supplement, which includes four new missions as well. This is the same format as the booklets that come in the core game. It's black and white and 16 pages long. At the start, you get some fluff about the Eldar. You get the general rules for how to use them, along with how they score victory points and progress through a campaign. And then you have the four missions. The most interesting thing about the Eldar attack expansion is it is geared toward two player games. The core missions from Space Crusade are intended for four players. You have one player as the alien, and then you have three players controlling three squads of Space Marines. The whole game is balanced around that structure. But this expansion, you have one player take on the Eldar faction, the other player is the alien, and then you have three missions that you string together into a mini campaign. However, the fourth and final mission in this booklet uses Space Marines, Eldar, and the alien player. So it's actually a five player game. I haven't had a chance to play that mission, but I'm sure it's quite crazy. The other thing this booklet contains is the rules for all of the new Eldar weapons. We'll talk about those when we look at the miniatures in a moment. As a side note, I did just want to mention the copy that I purchased included the original advertising flyer as well, which has HeroQuest on one side and then on the reverse 
it has Space Crusade. I do love it when I buy something on eBay and it has the original advertising flyers inside the box. That's always neat. Next, you get a new small room tile, which is used in a couple of these scenarios. This is much smaller than the tiles that come in the core set, but it really helps to add variety for the layouts and the expansion missions. And also, if you have this and you have Mission Dreadnought, you have quite a few extra little tiles for if you are homebrewing missions, you can create some quite interesting ships to explore. And as with all the other tiles for this game, it is one-sided. But come on, let's take a look at the miniatures. I know this is what most of you really want to see. You get 10 new miniatures in this expansion. You get nine Eldar warriors and one Eldar Exarch to lead them. This is the regular Eldar warrior. And it's a pretty cool sculpt. You will notice that as with the Space Marines in the original game, there is a plug in the front so that you can swap out different weapons. And there are four different weapon options for the Eldar. The basic weapon option is the Shuriken Catapult. This is pretty much like the Space Marine Bolter. It's a ranged weapon that rolls two white dice. But I should point out, the Eldar are generally better than Space Marines in terms of their basic stats. They have an armor value of two. The ones with the Shuriken Catapult can move seven spaces. However, if you equip them with a heavy weapon, they will only move three spaces. They still only have one life point each but their basic hand-to-hand -hand combat stat is three white dice. I will talk about that a little bit more in a moment because there is a bit of an anomaly with the way that that is laid out in the rules. The first heavy option for the Eldar is the missile launcher, and this works exactly the same way as the Space Marine missile launcher from the core game. So you are basically targeting a square and also hitting all of the squares around it. Next up, we have the awesome Shuriken Cannon. This is a ranged weapon that rolls one red dice and one white dice when attacking. But the really good thing about this gun is you can attack three times with it and you can split those attacks up. So you could use some of them before moving and some of them after moving. And that makes this gun incredibly versatile. And finally, we have the Laz Cannon. And this is a really interesting weapon because again, there are different ways you can use it. You can fire it up to twice in your turn, but both of the shots have to be taken at the same time, either before or after moving. But when you make an attack, you actually cover an area of four squares. So you could potentially hit up to four enemies at a time. You roll one red dice and you apply the result to every miniature in the target zone. However, if you really want to make sure something dies, you can concentrate your fire, in which case you only attack once, but you roll two red dice and apply the results to everything in the target zone. So the area of effect of this weapon is smaller than the area of effect on the missile launcher, but you have that choice between taking two shots, which is really good if you're being swarmed by Gretchen, or whether you want to take one shot, rolling two red dice for additional killing power. And finally, we have the Exarch. The weapons do plug onto this miniature in the same way as on the other miniatures, but unfortunately, there are no weapon options. You only have this choice of the Shuriken Pistol and the Force Sword. Armed this way, the Exarch can attack with three white dice in close combat or two white dice at range. When making ranged attacks, the Exarch can fire twice. And while there are no other weapon options for the Exarch, the Exarch does get a selection of powers to use in the game, which we will talk about in a moment. As with the Space Marine squads from the core game, the Eldar also gets a reference chart, which shows the movement values. You can see that once you equip one with a heavy weapon, their movement goes down from seven to three. So equipping them with heavy weapons really does slow them down and that can be a big problem. We have their armor class listed at two. We have the Exarch weapons there. And on the reverse, we have reminders of how the rules work for all of the other weapon options. And you will notice at the bottom, it says hand-to-hand -hand combat, two white dice. This contradicts the rules book, which says that Eldar in close combat roll three white dice. But I think this is just a problem with how this card is laid out. Because if you look at where it says hand-to-hand -hand combat, two white dice, that is actually under the heading of Eldar heavy weapons. So it's my understanding that any Eldar using a shuriken catapult will roll three white dice as stated in the rules. But once you equip them with a heavy weapon it goes down to two white dice because they really are encumbered with those big heavy weapons and they can't handle themselves in a fight to the same degree at least that's how i understand it and how i play it also included in the expansion are two cardboard standees with plastic bases one is a force wall you will use this when you use a force wall generator item it will create a barrier on the board the other one is your psychic screen this is used to indicate where the Eldar will enter the board because they do not enter via docking claws like the Space Marines do. And then you get eight new blip tokens and these have one of two things on the reverse. They will either say dummy 
in which case they are a fake reading on the scanners, there is nothing there. Or you may get, if I can find one, I'm getting all the dummies. Equipment. Some of the missions involve searching for equipment around the map. If you flip over a blip and it says equipment on it, you have found the equipment you are looking for. And finally, you get a selection of new game cards. I don't normally sleeve my game cards, but for Space Crusade and Hero Quest, I do. I obviously want to keep these in the best condition possible. If you want to know what kind of sleeves I am using, they are Sleeve King's Yucatan card sleeves, 54 by 80 millimeter. You get 110 in a pack. They're not the thickest sleeves in the world, but they are good enough for me. This is a deck of 22 alien event cards. You will use this in place of the original alien event deck when you're playing a two player game with one Eldar player versus the alien player. And it basically is a restructured alien event deck with a lot of stuff geared around the two player game. When you get to mission four and you have Space Marine and Eldar players at the same time, the alien player will have access to both alien event decks and each turn they will take one card from each deck giving them a lot more options but some of these cards are recreated from the original alien event deck but there's a whole bunch of new ones and i'm just going to flick through these quickly you can pause the video if you want to stop and read any of these or you can close your eyes real tight if you don't want spoilers. But as with the core game, all very nicely illustrated. Some of them will help the Eldar player. Some of them will hinder the Eldar player. You get four new order cards for your Exarch. These are like the order cards that the Space Marine commanders get in the core game. They have the color illustration on one side and then they have the different artwork with the rules on the reverse. These are single use cards. When you start a campaign with your Eldar faction, you will have just one order card per mission. As your Exarch progresses through the campaign, you will gain access to additional order cards. There are 12 new equipment cards, which are obviously specialist items for the Eldar. When you start a campaign, you get to select four. Eventually, as you progress through the campaign, you can have as many as six. Again, we have the same unusual double-sided card format that we saw in the core game for Space Crusade. So you have one side which is in full color and that has all of the rules on. And then you have completely different artwork and some fluff text on the reverse. It's really cool. You get two lots of artwork for the price of one. But that's with the other cards that we've looked at. I'm not gonna go through these in detail here. You can pause the video and read through them yourself at your leisure. If you do have any comments or queries about anything you're seeing in this video, do drop a message in the comment section below. I will do my best to respond if I can. And last but not least, you have the Exarch cards. There are 10 in total. And these are really interesting because they are skills and equipment that allow you to customize your Exarch. The idea is at the start of your first mission, you will select five of these. That's pretty interesting in its own right, having those options to really customize your character. But, even more interesting, Exarch Warriors don't have hit points in the normal sense. They don't have a tracker which goes down every time they take a wound. Instead, every time you take a wound, you have to discard one of your Exarch cards. If you have no cards left to discard, you die. And I think that's a really exciting concept. Cards as hit points. I've seen it used in different ways in other games, such as Far Team Zero and Gears of War. But I do wonder if Eldar Attack was the first time that this sort of concept was employed. It's also interesting to note that as you play through the campaign, your Exarch gets stronger and you get to draw more of these cards until eventually you can have as many as seven. So it gets to the stage where your Exarch can soak up a huge amount of damage and still carry on fighting. Really good stuff, really interesting. But once again, I'm not going to read through these cards in detail. You can pause the video and read through them yourself if you want to. And then if you have any questions, leave them below. And that's everything you get in this expansion. It may not look like a huge amount, certainly not for £180, but there are some things that you can't put a price on. And this was something that I just had to have for my collection. It's something I wanted for such a long time. And I finally had a reason to justify spending so much money on it. Having purchased something this expensive, there is a need to keep it in good condition. And with this being a flimsy tuck box with no inserts, it begs the question, how can you keep this expansion in the best condition possible? I resorted to the classic foam core. 
I have made my own foam core tray, which was really quick and easy to put together. If I remember, I'll put some dimensions in the video description. So if anybody would like to put together something similar, they can do. But I'm just gonna show you how everything fits inside this tray and then fits back inside the original slip box. You will notice, first of all, that over on the left-hand side, we have a compartment with a sheet of rubber steel glued into the bottom. That is, of course, for storing our miniatures. I have super glued a magnet to the bottom of each of my miniatures, so they will sit in this compartment and they will not slide about. They just sit in there like that. And check it out. They're not going anywhere. There is one minor problem with this setup. The X arch is too tall for the tray, which is why I've glued some rubber steel on the edge there as well. Because now our X arch can be stored that way. The cards are in their Yucatan card sleeves from Sleeve Kings, and then I've put them in this small plastic box, which just goes in there. Plastic baggie for the blip tokens, that just goes in there. All of the weapon options in another plastic bag, they go in here. Plastic stands for the standees, they can just go in here. Our reference card just goes in here. And our two cardboard standees can go in that compartment as well. Our new board tile sits over the top, creating a lid. That sits perfectly flush between the foam core wall on the left hand side and the card box on the right hand side. We don't want to forget the advertising flyer. And then we have our instruction manual, which just sits over the top of everything, like so. And that's it, we can now slip that inside the tuck box and it's perfectly safe and secure. No harm should come to any of those components. And there you have it, a quick look at Space Crusade Eldar Attack, one of my board gaming grails. I'm going to sign off this video now by saying once again, thank you to everybody who is watching, liking, subscribing, sharing. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing now. I've hit 10,000 and I really don't want to stop. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.